We're going to talk a little bit about the Raspberry Pi. This is the Model B Raspberry Pi. I shipped. Um, there we go, one Raspberry Pi. The Raspberry Pi was aimed to be a $25 Linux PC. It was built and designed by the Raspberry Pi Foundation here in the UK. It's based around one of the Broadcom ARM chips, will run Linux off an SD card. The CPU is old mobile phone technology, so it's a little behind the times in speed and power, but it's plenty fast enough for a $25 PC. Square in the middle we have the ARM CPU with 512 megabytes of RAM stacked on top. It's a Cortex ARM chip. Um, it runs at around about 750 megahertz. Bottom left corner, USB power jack, takes five volt power supply, power the whole board. HDMI output, so I'll plug into anyone's standard TV connector. RJ45 network connection for network access. Two USB ports for keyboard, mouse, Wi-Fi dongles, anything you can plug into a PC. Across the top, standard audio out jack, three and a half millimeters. Composite video for plugging into your old school TVs, CRT monitors. GPIO headers, this has input and output logic level stuff, which allows us to plug in and play with some extra toys. And the latest one to be used is the camera connector, 25 pound camera, which plugs into there. I think does 720p video. I haven't had a chance to play that one myself yet. And on the back, the SD socket, where you plug in your SD card with your flavor of Linux, your entire operating system. General purpose input and output header has 27 pins, which can be controlled by software to be either high or low or red as an input. These pins run between zero and 3.3 volts. Um, so they can either give you a zero volts, a 3.3 volts, or can read back whether they're currently having, receiving 3.3 or zero volts. Um, allows us to connect to electronics, things like switches, LEDs, buzzers, and more complex electronics like the Arduino, where you can talk to those. This is an example project for a Raspberry Pi GPIO header. There's four LEDs and two push buttons. A little bit of code runs in the background. You press a button and the LEDs increment, like set traffic lights, press the other button and they decrement. So you can go blue to green, yellow to red. So it's a nice, simple starter project. This just sits on the GPIO header and then you can go and write some code that will allow you to play around with the buttons and change the color of the LEDs. It's a nice way into code and electronics. You can get a little more, more complex. It's a whole LED matrix. Display bar graphs going up and down, VU meters going sideways, or even send this a frame buffer so a pixel animation. We can scroll text just by plugging this on the Pi. On the Raspberry Pi, squarely in the middle there, we have the CPU and the RAM. These are stacked on top of each other. It's quite a tricky manufacturing process. You have a PCB, printed circuit board, set on top of that. It's the CPU and the RAM. So these chips are BGA chips, ball grid array. So um, there are lots of little contact points in between the chips and actually the two chips are soldered on top of each other. If you look at the example of the underside of the CPU will look like lots of little silver contact points. Some of the modern Intels are connected like this. It's the problem with the Xbox is the ball grid array chips in your Xbox overheats and these solder joints break down. That's where they're all fixing them. So the thing about the Pi CPU is it also has more of these connections, more of these solder points on the top. Um, it's more sort of around the outside. Oh, I'm getting bored now. <laughs> and again, the RAM chip has matching connectors. They have to place this CPU perfectly aligned on these lower connections and then place the RAM chip perfectly aligned on the top again and then the whole thing goes through an oven and the solder paste is cooked and the electrical connection is made. Is there a benefit to that? Size of the board is the big one because the RAM chip sits in the same footprint as the CPU. You don't have to have it an extra place of space of board and you don't have to have all those interconnecting wires between the two which also take up board spaces. You've got to break those out and connect the two wires together and they're quite high speed data lines so they need to be laid out very carefully in order to avoid interference and noise and lag and all sorts of tricky little electronic engineering problems. There's a whole range of cases. This is the um, Mod My Pi Stealth case, which is actually branded up with the EVE logo, which was a Sissico Kickstarter project. It's a injection molded clamshell, 
So it splits in half. Mm -hmm. um, Raspberry Pi sits in the bottom. Case goes over the top, clips together, and there we have it. Another example is the Pibo by Pimeroni, made here in the UK in Sheffield. This is rainbow, laser cut acrylic layers, and this is just bolted together, so you just stack the layers onto the Raspberry Pi. Again, another nice sturdy case. You can go online, download a Linux image from the Raspberry Pi website, flash that onto your SD card, plug your SD card in, plug in HDMI, keyboard, mouse, power it up, and you have a Linux PC. You can then connect it to the network, browse the internet, read emails, open close files, playback videos. The people behind it were from the generation of the BBC Micro and the old Commodores, and they were used to the old plug it into a CRT monitor and just start typing code and go. So there is that square aim for it. It's very heavily aimed around programming and education and getting kids back into programming and education. So this is a $25 computer that it's quite hard to break. Um, if you mess up a file on the operating system, you can just take the SD card out, put it in your computer, reload the operating system back on and stick it in and you're away again, rather than breaking a Windows machine and spending three hours trying to reinstall it. It's a little bit more robust. A classroom full of these at $25 each is an awful lot less than five or six hundred bound computers. Could people be watching this video on YouTube on a part? Exactly, yep, and play back YouTube videos. There is a separate media center operating system for this called RAS BMC, which is a variation on XBMC, which is a home entertainment and media center operating system designed to play back and stream files over the network. And it's quite good at doing up to 1080p video playback with that operating system. So there's a lot of people use these as media center PCs and they just strap it on the back of their TV, have a load of movies and TV shows on the network storage and play back and watch through that. A bit like driving an early automobile. In the early days, you couldn't rely on an automatic gearbox. You had to know how to change gear. It was the same with the early computers. I got more mesmerized in terms of keeping the things working and not crashing and how all that happened. That's how it began.